Star Trek has for over 50 years painted the future as mostly a bright and upbeat place. Whilst certain recent series have questioned some of that, the technological advances in the franchise have ensured that at least almost everyone around Starfleet never really has to know what hunger is. The same cannot be said of fear though. Star Trek has from time to time managed to scare the absolute pants off the viewers. It started early, some of the original series episodes have some truly dark moments in them, like Wolf in the Fold, Cat's Paw and Devil in the Dark. When Star Trek commits to frightening the audience, it goes all in. The movies, well, they largely avoided horror, though there are some moments that really stand out. And the next generation, well, they managed to shock more than a few audience members who weren't expecting the violence on the show and some of the spookier bits, which I will get into. And Deep Space Nine, well, <laughs> it laughed off the audience's fears and ate those for breakfast. In the spirit of Halloween, this list breaks down some of the most frightening and disturbing moments from the franchise. Slap some spooky reverb on my voice, Chris, please, because things are about to get horrifying. With 10 of the most horrifying moments in Trek. Number 10, Spider Barkley. Genesis is an episode that on its own two feet is perhaps not the best narrative of any episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. However, between Beast Wharf and Spider Barkley, there are scenes of pure disgust on the show, ready to have the audience crawling out of their skins by the end of the episode. Barkley's T-cell virus is horrific. It causes the infected to revert to early stages of their evolutions in their species. For some, this is somewhat inconvenient. Nurse Ogawa reverts to an earlier ape creature, though her unborn baby is the key to helping the crew. Troy reverts to some kind of amphibious creature, whilst Riker, well, he doesn't change at all. <laughs> Here or night. Worf, with his Klingon DNA being the gift that keeps on giving, he reverts to a demonic creature that sprays acid and hunts people to consume them. Barclay's de-evolution is perhaps the most bizarre though, because someone along his line must have been related to Spider-Man, because he reverts to a creature resembling a kind of contaminated half-breed of human and arachnid. And when Barclay slams against the glass in engineering, Captain Picard was not the only one who screamed. That was for sure. Number nine. Zombie Vulcans. Enterprise's third season is when the show truly hits its stride, finally delivering some of the best episodes in the form of the Zindi War arc. This is an early entry in the season, coming not long after the initial assault on Earth that brought the Enterprise into the Expanse in the first place. The Vulcan ship Selea is discovered in the Expanse, transmitting an automated distress call. T'Pol recognises the ship, having served on it for a year before transferring to the Vulcan consulate. They go and help the trapped crew on board. However, when they arrive, they discover something horrific waiting for them. Zombies are one of the classic horror tropes, so it's difficult to do them convincingly and in a way that stands out from the rest. Here though, there is something about a zombie Vulcan. In life, they bury their intense emotions, so when you engage with one, usually it's kind of like talking to a computer, but zombies, by their very nature, exist only to consume and destroy. Nothing else drives them. The idea of combining the two is particularly chilling, as they are relentless and almost unstoppable. Impulse remains one of Enterprise's most frightening episodes exactly for this reason. Number eight, Commander Remick's head. I was thinking about putting this further down in the list, but you know what, let's have it now. This scene is of course infamous in Star Trek. Not only is it one of the most graphic death scenes in the franchise, it is the Randy Orton of death scenes in the franchise. I mean, it completely comes out of nowhere in the first season of TNG. Starfleet has been infiltrated by a race of parasites with the parasitic queen being embedded in the unlucky commander Remick. This is particularly unfortunate as he'd been aiding Admiral Quinn in attempting to root these monsters out in the first place. Or was he? Upon discovery, Picard and Riker aim their phasers at him, firing with such intensity that he is first forced back into his chair and then in like a grotesque display, his flesh is seared and melts away from his muscle and his head explodes. And it doesn't stop there. His torso begins to be dissolved, revealing this alien queen and her parasites around him. The two men fire again, destroying the queen, leaving an eviscerated, decapitated, all types of aided Remick behind. It's a scene of pure nightmare fuel and it succeeded in being censored for years following its transmission. Number seven, Riker's reality. Frame of Mind is an unsettling episode of Star Trek, and it plays on the truth of what actual reality is. 
In some ways, it plays like ship in a bottle, though instead of the holodeck, the reality in question is Riker's mind, buried in layers and layers of false truths, making the viewer question what is real and what isn't. The episode seems to place Riker in a gradual loosening of his reality. The play in which he's starring, Frame of Mind, begins to mix with what the audience knows to be real. Whilst he's trapped in this purgatory, a cut appears on his forehead, faces in the crowd stand out to him and also unnerve him, and he finds himself trapped in the very prison that the play is representing. There is little chance of being able to grasp onto something to cut through his mental haze. Some of the greatest horror that an audience can undergo is the questioning of what is real around them. Some of the best episodes of television play on this very fear. Whilst the episode ends in a relatively happy manner, it leaves that aftertaste that maybe, just maybe, Riker never escaped that prison at all. Number six. Garak hunts the crew. One of the running gags in Deep Space Nine is that Garak is much more than his plain, simple tailor facade. He shows again and again that his experience and knowledge is far greater than anything a simple tailor should ever know. So when that fearsome level of experience is turned against Starfleet, that is something truly terrifying to be on the receiving end of. In Empok Nor, he is exposed to a drug that is a psychoactive, turning him slowly more and more paranoid. His aggression builds first in such a way that actually helps the team of engineers that he's there to assist. Three Cardassian soldiers are also infected and are released as part of a booby trap. Thankfully, Garrett hunts them down, but He's not finished there. One by one, the team of engineers are picked off. Garrick himself is responsible for the death of one of them. The team are distinctly lucky that he is not responsible for more because the more deranged he gets, the more he plays on the fear of those remaining. Coming to the rescue is Chief O'Brien, a trained soldier and obviously one of the most important officers in Starfleet. There's a whole list explaining why that is true, so uh, if you want to try it in the comments, crack on, but maybe you're better doing it on that list. He manages to incapacitate Garrick, but it's a very close thing. I think the scariest thing about this episode is that it leaves us with more questions about Garrick than there are answers. Number five, face to face. In Star Trek Voyager's first season, viewers received a healthy dose of terror in the episode called Faces. The Vidians were one of Star Trek's most tragic, yet at the same time horrific villains in the franchise. They're devastated by the Phage, a disease that rots them from the inside out. They were condemned to hunt and harvest other people to survive. Gals as they may be, there was sympathy to be had as they acted for survival. However, Dr. Sulan may be the most unsympathetic of the lot. He takes Torres, Paris and Durst captive, beginning to experiment on them but showing particular interest in Torres' Klingon cells, which prove to be resistant to the phage. In his horrific trials, he manages to split Torres' human and Klingon halves into two separate beings, falling in love with the Klingon half. To make himself more attracted to her, he then kills Durst and Hannibal Lecter-style grafts the officer's face onto his own. Yeesh. It's horrific and is a murder committed for another one's vanity rather than just his pure survival. Number four, hanging around. Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan generally sits very high on most viewers' rankings of the Star Trek films, and for good reason. One, it's highly engaging, two, it's fun, and three, at times, it's also a dark entry in the canon. One of the darkest moments in the film comes with what the crew of the Enterprise find on Regular One. After their attack by Khan and the Reliant, the Enterprise limps over to Regular One to ascertain what exactly is going on. They expect hope to find Dr. Carol Marcus and the rest of the team on Project Genesis. However, what they find leaves nightmares in the minds of many of the viewers forevermore. The station is silent, bar the messages coming through from the Enterprise. Kirk, Savick and McCoy quietly inspect the area, trying to find if there is anyone left to tell them exactly what has happened. McCoy, ever the man we would never want to see come to harm, walks slowly backwards before he steps face first into the hanging corpse of one of the scientists. Khan, in a rage over not being able to find the Genesis materials, tortured and slit the throats of every member of the Genesis team left behind on the station. Star Trek had gone horrifically dark. Number three, the bodies move. This episode of Star Trek The Next Generation was terrifying. When one keeps in mind that Star Trek is generally an adventure show with philosophical learnings, it's important to remember that it doesn't often go in for pure horror. So this example, perhaps more than any other on this list, could be a scene taken straight from a 70s psychological horror film. In the episode Night Terrors, Dr. Crusher and the rest of the crew is suffering from lack of REM sleep. And as we go through the episode, we start to see the strain. She's conducting an autopsy on the bodies of the crew from the USS Bratain, the Miranda-class vessel that was trapped and eventually devastated by a subspace anomaly. 
She starts to hear noises. There could be whispers at first, a light wind rustling around the room. Then, in one of the most disturbing yet simple scenes in the entire franchise, she turns to see that everybody in the room, still covered in their sheets, have raised into a sitting position, silently staring at the terrified doctor. <laughs> Instant nightmares, anyone? <laughs> Number two. Thanks, Dad. The idea of an afterlife in Star Trek has varied connotations. Religion was somewhat antithetical to Gene Roddenberry's view of the future. However, with religion as ingrained in the public psyche as it is, playing on the idea of hell is an easy way to seriously disturb an audience. In Star Trek Voyager's third season episode, Coda, Captain Janeway is seriously injured on an away mission. She hallucinates several different versions of events before she is greeted by the ghost of her father. Vice Admiral Janeway tells her that he is there to help her accept what is happening and guide guide her into the next realm. Though it takes a while, Janeway finally realises that this is not her pops. She resists him, figuring out that he can't take her with him against her will. Whether it's a lie or not, the alien leaves her with a chilling warning. Eventually, her time will come for real, and when that time comes, he'll be there, waiting to take her, and when he does, she will nourish him for a long, long time. If that isn't hell, what is? Number one, clicks in the dark. This is easily one of the scariest scenes in Trek as a franchise. And you know what? It doesn't bathe you in crazy CGI and mad story and sound effects. It's all based around piecing together bits of information that create a creepy collage. The scene is set entirely on the holodeck and features some of the main cast becoming so frightened one moment after another that it's close to impossible to watch it without feeling that sense of dread. The scene begins slowly with Troy guiding them through a reconstruction of what initially is felt to be a shared dream. They agree that they were all in a darkened room. Then they agree that there was a table in the room that was made of wood. No, 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 not made of wood. Actually, it's made from metal and that there was a restraint on the table. Above the head, a swing arm with serrated blades. Then once they've agreed on what this cold metal experimental table looks like, they begin to remember the sounds. First, it's whispers. No, not whispers, it's a click. No, not just clicks, lots of clicking, louder clicking, faster clicking. The scene ends in one of the most heart pumping, toe curling moments ever, as Geordie, Riker, and even Worf all agree in dread that they have all been in this room before. And it leads to a very interesting climax. So there you go, 10 of the most horrifying Star Trek moments. <laughs> Let us know what yours are in the comments below. We're on Twitter as well, at Trek Culture. You can check me out there too, at Marcus, M-A-R-C-U-S, B-R-O-N-Z-Y. Or my podcast, How to Kill an Hour, wherever you listen to those. Until next time, L-L-A-P.